how to keep warm in your tent on a, on a cold night. The first thing is the tent itself. In my opinion, you're better off to have a four season tent in the beginning. It's no good having a three season, why even bother? You can, obviously you, it's easier to cool down in a tent than it is to heat up. So I believe you should get a four season tent to begin with. And that being a double wall tent because you don't have as much trouble with condensation. So that's the first thing to get the tent right before you even start thinking about how you're going to stay warmer in the tent. The next thing before you start worrying about the inside of the tent is the positioning of the tent. Now when I first started off I thought well it's going to be better to find some sheltered spots behind some bushes or trees. It's not the case. You should orientate your tent to make use of the prevailing breezes. The, the main problem in winter where you're going to get cold is condensation. The other thing is to open the vents on your tent. There's a vent under here. That's the main vent on the tent there. You have that open all the time to help with condensation. Don't cook in your tent. It also causes condensation in the tent. We're always tempted to cook in the annex when it's raining and sometimes you have to do that. But in general, if you can avoid it, don't cook inside your tent. Keep away from large bodies of water. They can cause the air temperature to be colder and you also get moisture blowing off the water. Never store wet clothes in your tent because that also causes condensation. When you arrive at camp after a long day's hiking, try and keep yourself warm layer up with more clothes if because obviously as you've been hiking through the day you probably strip right off because you've got warm but when you get to camp layer up again you want to try and keep yourself as warm as you can before you get into your sleeping bag at night now moving inside the tent when i first started off this was the least obvious to me. I thought, well, if you keep warm on top, you should be okay. But the biggest problem, which I found out, is the temperature of the ground. So the more layers you have underneath yourself, you've got the floor of the tent. I've also got a footprint underneath the tent. I've got my hiking poncho doubled over as another layer I've got an insulating foam underneath there as well then I've got my Thermo Rest Neo Air mattress and then I've got my Sea to Summit bag on top another must have which I packed away is a Sea to Summit pillow. Obviously it doesn't have to be Sea to Summit, but a decent quality pillow. I believe that's, it probably weighs about 100 grams and you get a much more comfortable sleep. And also it's, it's a good insulation underneath your head. And that's how ridiculously small it packs down. Uh, no, it doesn't take up hardly any room. So why wouldn't you take a, a decent pillow? 
for cold weather camping. Right, the clothing I had on last night. Got this merino wool top layer with long sleeves. I had on some merino leggings. A nice warm pair of socks. I didn't have these on last night, but a nice warm pair of gloves can help as well. All those extra layers help with keeping you warm. As I say, you can sink the sleeping bag around your face but the one thing you don't want to do, which I found out from personal experience, is to get right down in the sleeping bag and breathe, exhale into the sleeping bag. I haven't measured it myself, but I've heard from a number of sources that over an eight hour period at night, you can exhale up to a pint of water. So obviously that's why you have the vents open on your tent and that breeze I was talking about earlier on to stop the condensation on the inner wall of your tent. But you don't want that condensation being breathed into your sleeping bag because that's going to take away the warmth from your bag. The extremities of course, your feet, your hands and your head Particularly your head is where you lose a lot of heat. So I was wearing this beanie as well, which as I say, stops the main part of your heat escaping out through the top of your head. I say also gloves and socks can help as well. It's those extremities where you're gonna lose the most heat. The other two important things I have with me is I've got this aluminium insulated bottle which I put hot water in at night I put that into my sleeping bag to warm it up that's another good point obviously the warmer you get your sleeping bag before you get in it the better off you're going to be also for men more I suppose is a pee bottle once you've got warm inside your sleeping bag, you don't want to be getting out into the freezing cold to take a leak. So that's why you have a, a pee bottle. You can use that inside your tent, obviously away from your sleeping bag. You don't want to have any accidents there. And that can be just stuck out the door into your annex. But you don't want to be getting out, moving around outside in the freezing cold to take a leak. And also it's obviously very important that you take a leak before you go to bed. I found merino wool to be the best clothes to wear. I don't necessarily have a, a designated nighttime sleepwear kit. I often swap that out on my hikes. I have two sets of clothes, wash one out, rinse that out, use the next one. So the merino top layer the merino leggings socks they're just they're not a designated sleep system for me but they can be it's entirely up to yourself if you want to carry that extra weight it's also a good idea to have a hot high calorie meal before you go to bed and maybe even a hot drink but in my opinion I would say that you'd want to leave a couple of hours before you actually turn into your sleeping bag after you've had that meal. For me personally, if I had a hot meal and a hot drink then got in my sleeping bag, I just wouldn't have a very comfortable sleep. That's, that's for me anyway. My solution is I have that hot meal and hot drink a couple of hours before I get into my sleeping bag. Then just before I get into my sleeping bag, I walk around, you can do some push-ups, star jumps, 
burpees and get yourself warmed up before you get into the bag. That's the key to be warm before you get into your bag. You've got your hot water bottle in the bag. That's what's, it's the bag isn't gonna, it's your body heat inside the bag that's keeping you warm. It's that insulated bag. You're not going to get in there freezing cold. It's going to take you hours to warm up. So you've got to get into that bag hot, do some light exercises. But with those exercises, not to the point where you're starting to sweat. You don't want that either. You don't want to be getting into your sleeping bag with moisture on your skin if you can avoid it. And the final point As if you've done a really successful job with all the layers underneath your sleeping bag plus the layers you've got on. If you've made a real success of that and you do start to sweat in the middle of the night, then you've got to take layers off, stick your foot out of your sleeping bag or whatever, but you've got to cool yourself down. You don't want to be sweating inside the bag. It's not going to help at all. I hope you found that reasonably informative. Cold weather camping, it goes without saying. If we're talking about, you know, minus 20 degrees up in the high mountain country, we're talking about something else again. We're talking about another, another whole set of equipment, different tent, Hilleberg, expedition tents all that type of thing i realize that we're talking about like temperatures last night that's the temperatures i deal with and that's the temperatures i'm basically talking about hi and seeker signing out give the video a like and subscribe to the channel that'd be great and i hope to see you on another video soon take care goodbye